Well, thank you everybody for your time today. Um, my name is Corey Johnson. I'm from Bentley Systems. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, construction level estimation from a federated project model. Uh, very uh, big term, but we'll try to make this uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm part of uh, the Synchro product team within Bentley. Uh, just a real quick intro. Uh, for those not familiar with what Synchro is, uh, Synchro was an acquisition several years ago by Bentley uh, that was a world-class leader in 4D simulations, but we've expanded this and turned it into from a, a individual product to our whole portfolio. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on today is the pre-construction planning stages of doing uh, estimation and breaking down a federated model to do construction level estimation. But as you can see, we have quite the portfolio where we can take information uh, hosted on the cloud, uh, make it available for field users all the way up uh, for tracking performance, timesheets, equipment, costs, and 4D, manu uh, 4D simulations. Uh, one of the reasons Bentley's put a real big focus is projects are getting more and more complex and having great point solutions has been a, a staple in the construction industry. But as you start to get more complex, timelines are getting shorter. Communication is, is key. Getting answers quicker and faster to folks is reducing risk and increasing your profit. So one of the things we're going to talk about today is not only how do we get good information from the model, but I'm going to show you quickly some things that you can do with it from that broken down federated model. And one of the things I learned in my time in the construction industry is uh, you have to know where you're at, not only logically um, on the job site, you know, where am I physically at, but also where am I starting at, as you can see here, a nice little example, my equipment, I know where it's at on my project site, and that's important. How do I get from point A to point B? But as you see in the chart up above, I have to understand my costs and quantities very early on and then track against that to make sure that my project is healthy. Because if you don't measure, you can't improve and you don't know where you're going. So all these breakdowns and that cost estimation up front actually you know, has very big downstream effects uh, on that project health. So real quickly, uh, you know, they wanted us to kind of come away a few key points. So I'm gonna focus on these four areas today. Uh, I'm gonna show you what we consider what a federated model is. Um, and Bentley has other terms for things. I'm trying to keep this as generic as I can. Um, bringing in disparate systems. Break this down for construction workflows. And what does that actually mean? And then once you break this down, what can you do with it that most people aren't taking advantage of? And then if we do do those things, what impact does it have? Communication to me is very key in all of this. So federating a model, we're bringing in disparate models to normalize not only the CAD graphics, but you need to normalize the data because the data drives all of what we're doing. The graphics are beautiful and great and important. The data is actually the big key in all of this. So, and what I mean by this is, and I, I was a designer for almost 20 years. And on the left side of this chart, designers feed this digital twin, this digital model with lots of great information from an engineering aspect. But the key is construction. Construction, if you take a look at the arrows, it's a double-sided arrow on all of these because in construction, things change every day. Was this installed? Yes or no. If this is installed, then I can go on to my next step. If it's not installed, I need it resolved. How quickly can I have that resolved? So there's a lot of information going back and forth and being a, a model-based workflows where a lot of the market's going is key. Now we do have the abilities to do non-model based workflows, but that's kind of what our focus is here today. How do I take that rich model and actually use it for more than just looking at it and, you know, getting some basic quantities on the overall project. 
And, and people always wonder, and I like this little example, uh, everything seems to be file-based in the past. Uh, what we're doing when we talk about this federated model is I can bring in MicroStation, Revit, Open Roads, Open Bridge into a single, I'm not going to call it a, a file, it's a model. And, and Bentley's uh, focus is on open source. So all of this data is available. But when we have all this information, I can track my updates that are made daily by the MicroStation team, weekly by the Revit team, bi-weekly by the roadway designer team. They all see this, and then we have all these folks that can use it for additional purposes. And they can use any type of device to access it. Now, when we do this, it's very important to track change sets because things are going to change. And that's what these little boxes kind of imply. If I assign cost codes or I break down this model and it changes the next day, what happens to that breakdown? What happens to my quantities takeoff and my estimate? We can actually track all of those changes and validate those. This wall is now 20 feet longer and we know when it changed and what we do with it. So here's just an example of what we're going to look at today. This project has quite a few Revit files. You'll see some DGNs that are from Open Roads, Open Rail, IFC, and other formats all in one project site. Now, a little glimpse. What happens when you have a nice breakdown and you add intelligence to it? Then we can start to actually put a schedule to it and see this. Just a little glimpse of where we're going on our journey today. So the first thing, we aggregated that model, and then what's the next step? We need to break it down for construction speak, construction language. I need to understand how does this, uh, how am I going to estimate and break this down? We don't want to pay designers to break down models for us because they never, as, as good as they are, they never get it right. Construction understands how to break it down. They know how they're going to uh, construct it and assemble it. So let's break this down. But when we do so, we're going to establish account codes, cost codes. Everybody may use a little bit of a different term, but your company has historical records of all their cost codes and their um, historical production rates. So what happens when I can apply that to that nice model? Then I get something valuable. So what we're going to see here is uh, in this project, uh, we got a bunch of piles, and we're going to do this, what we call quantity takeoff view. And what we want to do is we want to read the engineering information. So we got a pile here, not a lot of great information, but there's good information. Here we're going to come in, and this is our construction side. I can assign my own company's cost code structure to engineering modeling elements. So here we're going to say I want to assign this pile cost code a 30102. Now, when we link this in, that thing's going to go green. Green is good. I've got a cost code assigned. And here we can see our report. So not only do we get the fact that it's an each, it's a single pile, but we also know how much concrete's there. We put in a factor for waste. They also put in a factor for estimating the steel reinforcement. And we knew the production rate, and we put a formula in, so we know how long does this take based on our historical performance for that driller to drill that pile. So real quickly, we got five quantities out of one item. Now I could go through and select, and I got a lot of those, and it's very difficult. We can make this simpler by assigning these in bulk. Now, again, I, I, I was called lazy in a former life. Not lazy, I'm efficient. I've done this once before in my job, so I saved it. So I pull in my assignments. And I know that if it says concrete pile and it's got this information, I'm going to assign it a 30102. I got concrete slabs, a 30106. Find them all in my project and assign them all. So now I got lots of green on my model. And we can turn those things off and on. But here we step through and we can get a very quick summary. There's 300 piles. There's my concrete. Uh, floors that I need to pour, and I can see how much concrete is there. I can see roughly how many man hours it's going to take for that driller to do those piles. We did that in seconds, and that's his, based on our historical and our cost codes. 
And because I know there's a lot of great and estimating software, Bentley is not an estimating software. I can group this and sort this information and make it available for anybody else if they already have a good system. Our focus here is breaking down this model and giving great information to the estimators. So here you see a huge concrete pour came from Revit, but that's not how we're gonna build it. So we actually have tools, one of the few in the industry, we can actually, I call it slice and dice. I can slice this slab into pieces. It's asking me if I wanna keep my cost codes. Why is that important? I've already assigned my cost code. It knows it's a slab. Now I'm making it from one into 10. Now here's a beautiful thing. Don't have too much time to explain it, but I don't destroy the original. There's a parent element and then these are all children elements. And that's important because we never wanna change the design intent. We are adding data. So now I have this model and all those pieces, I can even split it again. I can split that end into individual pores. And again, very quick, we even have an undo. We can undo this if needed. Now this is important because now we have this big slab and I can break this down into however it needed to be broken down into and get accurate quantities. Now, when we do this, we're not done with those individual pieces. They can be used elsewhere because now we know the production rates, we know the accurate quantities, and we kind of have it broken down how we want to stage this. So let's take a look at our next slide here. So we have saw that we can get the estimate out uh, to uh, an Excel spreadsheet, and we can conform that uh, export to be whatever format you need to feed into your estimating system, because I know that those have uh, much more robust. We're focused on giving you accurate quantities and, and putting your intelligence to this. But once you do this, you win that job. Now what can I do with that information that's assigned to that model? So I come in and notice there's our slab. And what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, read those properties off of that uh, uh, concrete slab. And remember it was a 300106. So read that, let's put those quantities in to our estimate or to our schedule, show them to me. So watch this, we're gonna add into this column and we're gonna see the individual pieces and then the cumulative sum. Now this is important because we know the production rate, we know the quantities, it's going to drive the durations on our schedule. And the important part is once we start to drive this and you see the quantities, we can actually see the quantity growth, tie in your cost to this. Now you get your earned value chart right here, which is very important. A lot of folks can do this, but we can tie it to the model. So we broke it down. We added our cost code structure. We put in our production rates. We put in our costs and we know the duration. So this is excellent information, but let's take it a step further. I have this, it's available, we can track all of this, but we can actually do the statusing out in the field from this same model and continue this workflow. So this is the part of the communication and validation. I need to be able to leverage this out in the field. So we have a mobile app, runs on the iPhone, iPad, Android, and you can actually come in and view that exact same model that we've been showing and have saved views. We can do statusing, we can file issues, but we also see the simulation on the mobile device. It geo coordinates, it knows where we're at. I can be standing out there in front of something and see what I should be looking at. But here you can see as the simulation's going, we can actually pan this around and move this around as the simulation's going. This is available online and offline. Now I know this is an estimation presentation, but when you break that down and you have that breakdown, it's very important to be able to track that and use that for somebody else. Now, if we status against that out in the field, which somebody has done here, now we're back in our web view. I'm back in the office. I don't need any special software. This is all through a web address. And I can see that same simulation. But notice I can see my Gantt chart because I have more screen space. I can pause this, stop it, roll it back. 
Now watch what happens when I click on one of those piles. Remember we saw those quantities and we set the schedule. Notice the plan duration was 64 hours, actual duration was 58 or 56. The plan start date, actual start date. This is valuable information so that you can track your progress and everybody on the job site can see where are we at, even the owners. Getting information in, you have a lot of flexibility and how do we wanna, you know, I can do a time range and show my simulation for a small section or the whole section, uh, save this information out. But this is the quantities and all of this information started at that, uh, 30106 uh, cost code, there's all of these workflows that you can start to drive. So wanted to try to get through this. Uh, it was a lot of material real quick. I wanted to go kind of high level. Um, the nice part about uh, how we've uh, kind of approached this, you can actually come in and on uh, www.construction.bentley.com, uh, any user can go in and you can actually get a free demo project for 30 days. You don't get all of the functionality, but you get quite a bit. You can invite your friends in. You can reach out to us or we'll reach out to you when you do a demo and we can walk you through some of these workflows and help you start to see very quick and easy to get started. Uh, I hope you see, uh, Doing estimation from a model is just the beginning of many workflows that can be driven right from that. And that change management being this open source, that's key. Because I do know that you, large companies and even small, you have other systems you need to tie to. And that's one of the benefits of our open architecture. All right. I have a couple of minutes. I've been trying to watch the chat. Um, do they have the opportunity to ask me questions, Jerry, or do I need to go back to the, our booth? Can we do that here? Or, or if anybody wants to type in a question into the chat, I'd be more than happy to answer that. We have a few minutes left. What's the name of the iPad app? Uh, again, that was at the very beginning. Uh, it's Bentley, it's Synchro Field. If you go to the App Store um, or Google Android, uh, it's synchro field. You need to have a demo project set up first. And then when you access the field app, it will automatically connect you and said you have a project and you can get in and, and actually uh, work in that project. Can you see the quantities, progress and animation? Excellent question, Sammy. Yes, you can. So we can, uh, visualize uh, through data visualization you can see the progress on the uh, the elements and even right here i don't have a lot of progress but if you see this little green uh, uh beginning on this task as they progress out in the field that will actually come across and give you another visual representation but we can also change the color of the model based on percentage complete you have a lot of different options one of the powerful uh, features of Synchro. And then you can even do on our desktop app, because uh, that feeds a lot of this. Uh, we don't have it on the web-based app, but on the desktop app, you can actually do a planned versus actual. And you can see the simulations going in parallel and see where I should be versus where I uh, actually am. Oh, the volume or area. Yes, yes, we can handle those. Yeah, when you set, uh, when we were back in that, in one of the earlier videos, they were setting in, you can choose um, the values to track progress against, whether it would be a surface area, volume, uh, percentage complete, you can have it do the calculations on it. You can set predefined 25, 50, 75% complete, or physically type in a number of how many cubic yards were poured. Uh, a lot of flexibility there. Do we handle DTMs, digital terrain models? Uh, when they bring them into the uh, uh, our, our federated model, yes, we do. Uh, we also handle point clouds, reality meshes as well. You could actually do a visual and show 
a drone capture of what's my status on June 1st, 2021. And I could actually run this to June 1st, 2021 and visibly see uh, this is what the drone captured and this is what's actually done. All right. Trying to keep us on time, Gary. Are we done? Do we want do we have time to go a little bit longer? Can we use it for earthwork? Uh, we can use it for earthwork if the earthwork is modeled in 3D, if there's like a 3D volume of the shape. Uh, I happen to know that Open Roads and Civil 3D, they have those capabilities. So if there is a three-dimensional mesh shape, we can actually start to track against that. Yes. We don't do average end area if, if that's what you're kind of referring to. Uh, persona. How about a Revit topo? Actually, we do, you know, even though we're Bentley, we do handle Revit files very, very well. Uh, we do bring those in uh, uh, extremely well. It, it's such a dominant uh, format in the market. That is one that we do handle uh, very well. I do know that. Can we work with mass hall planning tools and pull that into 4D and 5D uh, and quantity takeoff? We do have, uh, we are working with some other vendors who do uh, mass hall tracking with uh, machine control equipment. And we have uh, piloted and, and actually been successful in actually pulling in those simulations of what the mass hall uh, is showing us and, and the quantities. Um, not quite standard out of the box, but it is actually very doable. Uh, I happen to know I did that one myself. Um, so I do know that we can start to work with those mass halls and progressing against that from uh, machine control devices. All right, Gary is telling us, let's head over to our booth and uh, we'll let uh, everybody else continue on to the next session. But thank you all for your time today and I appreciate it.